Grand day, grand day. Welcome everyone to the Daily Huddle. Once again, here we are. My name is Chase Still Gray. I'll be your host for today. I'm excited. We have a very uh, accomplished guest today with a lot of great information. So I'm so happy to speak with him as you watch on and prepare your questions. But before we go forward, you know how we do it here. <laughs> Brace yourself, Dan. Brace yourself. <laughs> a little ready. joke or a little one-liner every now and just you know, pop a few in just to feel the temperature out. Today, <laughs> it's just a, just a funny little sentence, really. So, two nutritional bars get into a fight. Everyone goes crazy. They said, what happened? I heard fiber one. Uh, <laughs> Hold that thing. Yeah, buddy. I think I got it down, man, Sorrell. I think that's it. I think I did it perfect that time. Wow, I've been, been practicing. <laughs> Grand day, everybody. Welcome, welcome. It's such a great pleasure to be here. I enjoy it. I'm not telling you a lie. And uh, we have a great, great program for you today. Um, before we get into it, I want to check the temperature of our lovely family here. And I'm going to start out with Obet. Obet, how are you? And who will you hug today? Um, life is good. I'm going to actually um, hug my husband because he's my mom. He's my, my go-to, so that, that's the I one. I like that. I like that. I like that. Let's go with Mr. Mike Harris. Grand Rising, sir. Good morning. Yes. Where are you, and what are you grateful for today? I am exactly where I need to be. I like that. I like and I am grateful that I am able to be. Ah. Saw you switch that around a little bit. That was nice, man. I never heard that. That was, that was slick. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thanks for being with us today. So I wanted to get right into the presentation because we have a lot of information and I, I want to make sure you get all of it. Um, I want to welcome to the Daily Huddle, <clears throat> Mr. Dan Cornett. And I just want to tell you a little bit about him so he can get on, on the way because this is really a lot of great information. Uh, Dan is a former corporate sales representative who turned to nutrition when his stressful career left him obese with multiple chronic diseases, including cancer. After following the guidance of a nutrition coach, Dan was, <clears throat> was able to reverse his conditions and regain control of his life and his career. This experience inspired him to gain a certification from the Nutritional Therapy Association. And since 2018, Dan has helped hundreds of people like us to revitalize their lives through the power of optimal nutrition and sustainable lifestyle changes. Please welcome to the Daily Huddle, Mr. Dan Cornett. Awesome, well, thank you, Chase. I appreciate the intro there. And as a uh, former musician myself, I really enjoyed that drum riff uh, on the oh, intro. So love that, stuff, great right? job on that. Good <laughs> stuff. This question, what's causing your 2 p.m. energy crash? Yeah. Before you answer that, I just want to ask you, um, it, and, and we would just discuss we just discuss your your kind of your journey a little bit. But man, I mean, <laughs> it was inspiring looking at your information, and I wanted to ask you, how has your life changed in all this time from the perspective of how people relate to you? Right? Has things changed since you were in that obese state till now? What is that rel relatable? Just a quick answer, nothing too crazy, but uh, I'm curious about Well, that. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate the question. I think if anything has changed, it's been my my confidence, right? Yeah. And how I, more, more so how I interact with other people, you know, because I felt for so long when I was in that kind of obese state, uh, you know, a little bit of that like, clouded mindset, you know, that kind of thing where I just, I felt like I just would needed to be closed off and reserved, right? And yeah, and I don't know what it was, just something about just releasing all that energy from me, right? It just, it opened me up and kind of made me a different person. And 
not in a you know good or a bad way. It just kind of changed how I perceived life, and you know it really kind of made me want to grab life a little bit more, you know, and and really pursue something that is you know beyond me. You know, right. being, working a corporate job is great. You know, if that's what you want to do and you want to work until you're you know 50, 60 years old and retire and go do your thing. I looked around at what I was doing and didn't see that being a sustainable lifestyle choice for me. So, you right. know, I took the leap. I took the change to to leave my corporate job and go pursue this, you know, entrepreneurial role as, you know, a nutrition consultant. And it's been one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me in my life. I got to say, like, um, I just, I get so much joy from seeing the growth and development of the people that I work with and just, you know, celebrating their wins you know that just that fills me 100 percent. correct correct and you know one thing that grabbed me and i kind of knew this stat but it was actually higher than i thought when i was looking over your information and it said that over 70 percent of americans are obese and then it said over 85 percent are projected to be obese by 2030 that yeah. stuck in my head i was like whoa and of course the obvious which I know we don't like to talk about it a lot, but the people who are in that quadrant are most oftenly looked over in workplaces. Yeah. So if you're exactly if you have the aesthetic of an obese person, they would more than likely look over you. And I thought, wow. Yeah, Love yeah. There's that. actually been studies that have done that show that yeah, they I, get I looked totally over emotions. That. Yeah, yeah, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. So it's Ooh, and, and it's not incredible. it's not their fault, you know. And <laughs> and there's definitely a little bit of uh, you know a a stigma, right, that comes along with that. And, you know, almost a little bit, you know, I, I don't want to talk about like discrimination or anything like that, but right, I, I think right. that there is a certain aspect of that in the corporate, yes, you know, there being is. right yes, now yes. because they're looked at as people that are unhealthy, you know, maybe not fit to lead, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's 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 something that's not quite fair, but Ooh. it is a part oh. of life right now. And, you know, if you're able to reverse that and again, kind of, you know, have more energy, more, you know, productivity throughout the day through changing what you eat, you know, ultimately right. that weight's going to fall off and, you know, you're going to get noticed by your bosses, you know, by, by those uh, people that are, that are on, you know, above you. And, you know, that's going to lead to, to better positions and, you know, growth in your career as well. Excellent. You know, I know you have some information to give it to us. My pen is ready. Just give us a brief, uh, a, a brief overview to unpack this question a little bit before you get into your presentation, or if you'd like to start your presentation now, that'd be great. Either way. Uh, no, go ahead. Um, this, just that question, what's causing your 2 p.m. energy crash? What, how oh, do you unpack yeah. that quickly? Yeah, so I think it, a lot of it comes down to, uh, again, like what you put in your body. You know, a lot of a lot of us in these kind of busy, you know, corporate jobs, right? We get up super early, we try to be productive in the morning, Yep. You know, take care of the family, uh, you know, do all those stuff for other people, right? But you never actually take time for yourself. And, you know, it's those kind of things where if you are able to prepare yourself a nice breakfast in the morning, you know, go out for a walk first thing in the morning, you know, get those little bits where you can take care of yourself in the morning, that's going to take that's going to give you that energy to to get through the day. But um, yeah, as we get through the presentation, I'll show you like the science really behind what's going on in your body. It's causing that 2 p.m. crash. So um, yeah, we can go ahead and get into that right now. And uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. And again, just kind of give you a little more background about me and where I'm coming from. And uh, you guys all see the screen. Everything looking good? Yep, we got it. All right, cool, cool. So yeah, so you can see, uh, you know, on the left there, that's me at my heaviest. I was probably about 240 pounds at that point. And um, on the right, I'm down to maybe 175, 180. And that's kind of where I'm at right now and uh, have been for the past five or six years and feeling great and loving it every day. But again, you know, I for seven years, I worked as a corporate wine sales representative, you know, selling wine to restaurants, living that very high, high paced, um, you know, stressful lifestyle, always on the go. And that stressful nature of my job, you know, really um took a toll on my job on my life right and you know was paying very little attention to what i was eating and drinking way too much being in the wine industry you know it's a kind of a uh, side effect of the job there but you know really led to a lot of weight gain um and a poor health state that i was in right i was tired all the time um i had really bad joint pain you know i couldn't go for even like a mile run without my knees hurting 
Um, I slept really bad. You know, I remember always waking up every night, uh, at least multiple times and also nights where I just couldn't fall asleep and just, you know, was awake all night until I had to get up and go do the thing next day, you know? And, uh, and really the main thing is my mood, my mood was so just flat and blah. And I just, I hated it. Right. But regardless of all of that, I fought through it and I had one of the best years of my career while I was in this kind of state. And, um, but the year after I found that I was really struggling to hit my numbers and what it came down to is I just didn't have the lack or I had a lack of productivity and really the inability to focus and just a clouded mind, right? I couldn't think clearly. And at the time I really kind of thought that these were just signs of getting older, right? But really it turns out that I, like millions of other people that are out there, I'm sure a lot of you that are watching this right now are suffering from chronic disease and you might not even know it because it is a progressive disease. It is something that takes years and years and years to develop. So it's not something you just wake up one day and you're like, oh, I have diabetes. You know, it's something that takes time to develop, right? But for me, again, I was obese. I was diagnosed with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and prediabetes all before the age of 34. So, you know, a lot of people are saying, they're thinking that these conditions are, oh yeah, that's something that might happen to me later on in life. But it's showing up more and more, you know, in younger people, younger people, I mean, kids even as low as seven or eight are getting diagnosed with type two diabetes these days. So, you know, it's really something that's rampant in our life. And we'll go into a little more of why that happens in a little bit here. But, you know, for me, I luckily found someone that was close to my life that was uh, seeking out nutrition training to become a nutritionist. And I actually became her first practice client. So I got to see firsthand, you know, the power of real food. And, you know, through her recommendations and support, I was able to cut out sugar and processed foods and really learn how to take care of my body and my mind. And I was able to reverse my chronic conditions, right? And due to these dietary changes, I had this newfound sense of energy, of clarity, and focus, right? And I actually got promoted to the top sales route in my company oh, that following year. So cool. just one of those cool things where, you know, I changed my diet and was able to change my career at the same time. So, but the crazy thing, you know, my health journey wasn't quite over yet at that point. I had lost a bunch of weight, but in 2017, I found an unusual growth in my left knee. And it turned out to be a rare form of bone cancer called chondrosarcoma. And after doing a lot of Googling, I found out that I was very fortunate that that tumor was in a place where it could be surgically removed because if it shows up on your chest cavity or on your spine, you're kind of, you know, three, six months and, and you're done, right? So luckily it showed up in place where it could be removed. And, um, you know, I, it turned out to be an actually pretty low grade cancer, but there were a solid three or four months of my life where I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, had my choices that I made earlier in my life going to cause me to, you know, prematurely die. You know, it, those are the, all those things that were going through my head because I didn't know what it was. Right. But this scary experience is really what made me realize that health is not something that needs, that should be taken advantage of. Right. It's something that we need to strive for every single day. Right. So this is really what inspired me to get that certification in functional nutrition. And now six years later, I've, like you said, you know, I've helped hundreds of people to successfully quit sugar and processed foods, change their mindset around food and really, you know, regain their energy and take back control of their career and their life. Right. So that's my mission. That's what I love to do every day is just help people. Right. So when I was going through my, um, my health choice, my health changes, right. Um, uh, I remember struggling to make it through the workday. You know, I would always, grab countless cups of coffee, uh, you know, whatever sugary thing was in the work in the break room that day, you know, you name it, I tried it just to get the energy to get through the day. But no matter how much of that sugar and coffee that I had, inevitably, I would always have that afternoon crash, right? There'd always be a dip in productivity, you know, trying to stay awake while I'm at my computer screen, you know, whatever it was, right? But really kind of made me think like, what reasons could there be for this sudden energy drop? Well, as busy professionals, many of us are faced with multiple demands in our day, right? From, like I said, from getting up in the morning and taking care of the family and getting them out the door. And then, you know, all your work responsibilities that you got to have, all the day-to-day -day stressors, you know, traffic is getting worse no matter what city you're in, right? And, you know, most people just don't have time for hobbies anymore, right? You know, whether it's playing a sport or, you know, playing music like you, Chase, or, you know, just finding time to relax, right? Many people just don't have that. If anything, they sit down on the couch, 
you know, watch TV for half an hour and fall asleep. Right. Um, and, you know, we're all getting older every day. Right. And that's always the excuse that a lot of people have. But, you know, I feel better today at the age of 40 than I did at the age of 30 than I did at the age of 25, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I feel almost like I'm aging backwards. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see if, if that continues. But I think that there's more going on than that. Right. It all comes down to what you decide to put in your body. Right. So that's why I love this Lamborghini analogy. So imagine for a moment that you owned a Lamborghini or you know whatever car it is that's your your quote unquote dream car, right? You would absolutely love that car, right? You'd wash it every day, you'd give it only the highest quality gas, oil, and maintenance. Now, imagine what would happen to that car if you only fueled up at greasy truck stops, right? And only put low quality gas in the tank. You know, you never got an oil change or you know, you drove it until the tires were bald right? It would be in pretty poor shape, right? It's going to fall apart. It's going to break down. It's not going to last as long as you want it to, right? So what I want you all to do is to begin to see your body as that Lamborghini, right? We only get one body to live in, right? So you got to take care of it. The human body can actually do amazing things when it's fueled properly. Um, but the crazy thing is that it will last a long time, even if it isn't fueled properly, but it might not last as long as you want it to, right? Because eventually over time, your body's going to break down uh, if it isn't provided with the proper nutrients. So with our modern lifestyles, you know, most people are neglecting themselves. They're putting unnecessary wear and tear on their bodies from consuming a nutrient poor diet. You know, they're living stress a stressful lifestyle and again, not getting enough of that relaxation that we talked about. So what I want to do today is really just show you all what exactly happens in the body when we consume large amounts of, you know, sugar, processed foods, all those things that are, are actually really damaging to our bodies. So when we wake up in the morning, our blood sugar level should be around 80 milligrams per deciliter. So as you, if those of you that are on the stream right now, you can see a graphic up there. Um, you know, it's right at that 80, 80 milligrams per deciliter, which is going to be the low, low end of the normal range, right? So, so we've been fasting all night. Our blood sugar has been utilized for energy, all that kind of stuff. So it's at the lowest point that it's going to be for the day, theoretically. Um, <laughs> but you know, when we start our day with a meal that's balanced with healthy protein, fats, and carbohydrates, the nutrients that we get from that food, right, is going to be converted into energy that we can use for our body, right? So our blood sugar naturally and slowly rises to the top of that normal range, uh, which is usually around 100 milligrams per deciliter. And one of the main organs that's involved in blood sugar regulation is the pancreas. So when the blood sugar reaches that upper limit, the pancreas receives a message telling it to release the hormone insulin that's produced by beta cells in the pancreas. So insulin's job is to take excess sugar out of the blood and store it in the liver and muscles for later use. So after a few hours, when the blood sugar level begins to get low, the pancreas secretes another hormone called glucagon, which stimulates the liver to convert stored glucose called glycogen back into the into glucose which is then put into the bloodstream to be able to use as energy until you get to your next meal. So that's really it. That's how our body has evolved to continually ensure that we have the energy that we need to function. So now let's see what happens when we eat too much sugar. Here right? it comes. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, here we go. So basically, you know, you can see our body is just in a constant state of emergency, right? When we eat a meal that's high in carbohydrates or uh, processed refined foods, our blood sugar levels just shoot through the roof, right? And uh, that's really where that term sugar high comes in, right? So the pancreas generally is going to overcompensate, right? So you're like, what's going on? I'm, I'm getting overwhelmed here, right? So it's going to produce more insulin that's needed, uh, which is gonna cause your blood sugar to go down rapidly, right? There's an influx of insulin. It's all trying to grab all the sugar in the body and bring it somewhere and it's working over time. So it's gonna you know, drop it down way faster than you want it to. And what's going to happen is you're going to get that early morning or mid-morning slump, right? Where you've had your breakfast, you've had maybe a cup of coffee, you burn through that energy real quick, and then all of a sudden you're tired again, right? So basically at this point, at that drop, glucagon is trying its hardest to restore balanced blood sugar levels, but it just, no matter how hard it works, it can't get back up to normal. Right. So that's when that tired feeling gets in there. You're going to be lethargic. And so what do you do? You go to the coffee, you go to the break room, grab more coffee, go grab more sugar, go grab a donut, you know, whatever it is to kind of get your body back up to that, you know, normal level so that you can get on with your work day. Right. But as you can see, this roller coaster, this up and down, you know, all day, every day 
can do some serious damage and eventually can lead to insulin resistance and diabetes. Because eventually the more insulin's reduced or uh, produced in your body, the less the cells are going to be responsive to it. You know, basically insulin's insulin's going to become that nosy neighbor that's uh, knocking on the door and and uh, you know you guys are hiding in the back, you know, not wanting to answer the door anymore. And that's what happens. The cells are like, nope, I'm good. I don't need more insulin. And uh, so it gets to that point, right, where your cells don't allow that, and that's where chronic disease can progress. So a little bit about insulin itself is uh, the primary role of insulin in the body has always been thought to lower blood sugar levels. But in fact, really the primary role is to transport glucose in the cell, right? So its primary job is to take glucose from the blood and input it into the cell. So insulin really is a storage hormone. And so you can think of it as the key to the gate, right? That allows glucose into the cell. So insulin actually collects the sugar in the blood and physically brings it into the cells where it's either converted into energy or it's going to be stored as fat. So if muscle and liver cells are full, you know, say you have a big carb heavy breakfast and then immediately go right into work and sit down at your desk, right? You're not burning through that energy. It's going to end up being stored as fat for later, right? So insulin actually really tells the body not to break down fat, but to store it. So Another interesting fact is that we have three or four functions in the body to raise blood sugar, but only one to actually lower it, and that's going to be insulin. So evolutionarily speaking, our primary concern was always to raise blood sugar, right? Not to lower it, and we would have no need for that. So our body has redundant mechanisms to ensure that, you know, we survive in times of famine or, you know, when fruit wasn't in season, we didn't have access to a lot of that stuff. You know, we needed a way to create glucose in order to survive. So one of those additional functions to, um, to raise blood sugar is the hormone cortisol, right? So it's going to be produced by the adrenal glands that sit right on top of the kidneys. Uh, cortisol is what's known as the stress hormone. So like I said earlier, when blood sugar levels are low and glucagon can't balance those sugar levels, can't bring them back up to normal, the adrenals are going to fire up. That's our backup system, right? So that's our generator, right? That kicks on when the power is off, right? So the adrenals fire up and they send out cortisol to assist. So cortisol is able to tell the body to break down muscle and skeletal tissue in order to be converted in the liver into glucose. So cortisol really helps out when glucagon can't balance those sugar levels in the blood, but it's also triggered when the body is perceived to be under stress. So stress sends out that same emergency response signal that we would have if we were being chased by, you know, a primitive uh, saber-toothed tiger, or, you know, if we get in a bar fight, something like that, you know, we got to have that extra little bit of energy to, um, you know, to get out of that situation. It's also what happens when you hear about the stories of, you know, a mother and a, and a kid getting in a car accident and the mother has the, you know, crazy human strength to be able to raise that, that car to get their kid out right? That's that extra little bump of energy that you get from, from your adrenal glands. But excess of stress can lead to excess weight gain because blood sugar is being raised, right? Again, but our sedentary lifestyles, again, we're not utilizing that sugar that's being created. So insulin is going to store that in the body as fat, right? So that's kind of the cycle that we're in these days. So this is a nice little visual for y'all. So like I said, you know, imagine that you're a primitive caveman or cave woman, and you're just out hunting and gathering like normal, you know, and all of a sudden this massive cat jumps out out of nowhere and it starts chasing you. You know, what are you going to do? Immediately your fight or flight instinct kicks in and you remember, oh crap, I left my spear at the cave. I don't have anything to defend myself. So I got to run, right? So you start running and eventually you're going to use up all that stored glycogen in your muscles, right? You're going to use up all the energy that you have in your body. So the body's got to have something in reserves, right? So it's got to react. What happens is it triggers the adrenals to fire up and produce more glucose that's going to be used as that fast burning fuel. So it can give you the energy that you need to escape the tiger, right? So if we didn't have this, you know, system in our body, I'm sure we as a human race would have died out, you know, <laughs> thousands of millions of years ago, right? Uh, but, you know, the problem is, is that this process that we evolved is still with us today, right? And it can be triggered by even the slightest amount of stress. And, you know, who doesn't have stress in their life, right? I mean, we all have stressors, but you know, things like traffic, you know, of course, traffic is getting worse and no matter what city you live in, uh, you know, and there's nothing worse than that feeling of being stuck in traffic and knowing you're going to be late for a meeting or wait late to work, whatever it might be. But also things that you don't think about can be stressors in the body, right? Like eating a carb heavy processed food diet, right? It's a constant stressor on the body. 
as I just described, right? You saw that that constant up and down, right? So other things, you know, if you have a, you know, a boss, right? Your boss might look at you the wrong way or say something that makes you nervous, you know, about your performance or about your job stability, right? That's going to trigger stress. That's going to that's going to get you anked up, right? And you know, all these things add up every day, right? And the body still has that fight or flight response, which sends that signal to the adrenals to pump out cortisol and raise the sugar level in the blood. But like I said, if you aren't running for your life, you know, if you're not exercising a whole bunch, you know, that extra glucose is just going to be stored as fat, right? So over time, this is going to lead to adrenal fatigue. Again, just the same thing as insulin resistance, right? Where even in those stressful moments, your adrenals are not going to be able to help out. They're going to be fatigued. They're not going to be able to put out the same amount of uh, cortisol as needed to get actually get you through the stressor that you need to get, right? Um, which is really important why it's, you know, or why it's super important, I should say, to uh, minimize the amount of stress that's in our lives, right? And the single best way to handle stress and cortisol output is to eat a real food diet so that you're not constantly spiking your blood sugar, right? So be sure to eat a protein and fat heavy breakfast, right? You got to have those to get you that energy to get you through the day because fat and protein are more of a slow burning fuel, right? So carbs, as you saw, you know, shoot your blood sugar way up right away and, you know, bring it right back down. Whereas if you eat more of a, a, a fat and protein heavy diet, you're going to slowly raise that blood sugar up and then slowly it's going to come back down again, right? So you're going to be more of that even keel. You're going to have more of that sustained energy throughout the day. So again, yeah, be sure to eat more of a protein and fat heavy breakfast to give you more of that sustained energy. Um, and make sure that, you know, when you eat that more of a sustained breakfast, right, it's going to give you that energy so you don't need that coffee break, you know, in the middle of the day. But I always encourage you to take a break, right? Don't just power through and get all your work done. You know, make sure you're getting up through it periodically through the day and taking breaks, you know, get up from your desk, take a walk outside, um, you know, breathe some fresh air, which is always good for the, for the mind, right? To get out and just get some fresh air, walk around a little bit, play with your dog, play with your kids. If you work from home, that kind of thing, just take a break, get away from it, give yourself a little break, um, do some squats, you know, have a, have a pull-up bar behind your, your desk, you know, something where you can just get up and do one or two pull-ups, all you need to do, right? Just get the body, get the blood pumping a little bit, right? Get it moving. Um, you can drink peppermint tea. I love peppermint tea, have it all the time. Um, Pava tea is really good at relaxing the body as well. You can join a yoga class, learn to meditate, find a hobby that you enjoy doing, whether you enjoy playing sports, playing games, playing music, whatever it is, find the community, find people that you love to spend time with and do it. And I love this because it's gonna fit in with your all's ethos as well. Play, laugh, and love every day right? That's, that's what it all comes down to. So that's the presentation for today. I love that you guys gave me this opportunity um, and take it away, Chase, yes. whatever you'd like to finish yeah, with. Well, I, I didn't want to interrupt you. I, I, I think the information is spectacular. Uh, we appreciate you being here, of course. I just wanted to make sure that if there were any questions that we had from our people, we could get a couple in because we have the shortest amount of time. We, I'm sure that you have to come back again. I'm certain of it. Awesome. Uh, the information is wonderful. It's very clear. It's very it, it makes a lot of sense. Does anyone have any questions? Anything at all they'd like to ask Dan? Ah, yes. please, please go right ahead. I have a question. Yeah, How sorry. do you calculate the number of um, carbs each body needs? Is there a special calculation? Well, I think that everyone's different, right? Everyone's bio and individual. And I think it really comes down to trial and error to find out what the best ratio is for you. What my starting point for most people is, and this kind of might be contradictory to what I was just talking about, is actually 40% carbs, 30% fat, and 30% protein. But it's going to be more the leafy green um, you know, carbohydrates. They're not going to be more of the starchy carbs, right? Like potatoes, sweet potatoes, squash, a lot of those things that can actually uh, fuel a lot of this uh, blood sugar raising, right? So again, having more, more of those lower carbohydrate, leafy green vegetables, and then, uh, you know, quality protein sources, whether that's coming from, uh, from animals or from plants, whatever you prefer and uh, and having the right types of fat, which uh, which is a whole nother set of podcasts, which I would love to do with y'all because there's a lot of information oh, on that man. as well. <laughs> we definitely need more time. Thank you, Cece, for that wonderful question. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, 
in your journey, and there's been so many things, that's why we need to have you come back. There's so many things I wanted to ask you about that I didn't get to ask you, but in general, throughout this whole curve and this whole journey, what has been one or two of your go-to things that has continually given your body the satisfaction, the ease, the fluidity? If you could, I know it's your only your journey, but I always like to leave the people with something that they could grab onto and maybe put into their general um, regimen that may help in a lot of ways. There are a few things that I know I use, but I'm, I'm curious about what. what yeah, I mean, I, I think I think for for me it was it was mindset, right? Mm. I think that was the biggest change for me because, again, it was getting rid of the. I guess the, the traditions around food, you know, it's the, you know, Oh, we're at the movies. We got to have popcorn or, Oh, it's Friday night. I got to have a bowl of ice cream, you know, or it's pizza, you know, those kind of things where it's like, you do certain things on certain days. And, you know, I think that I just had to get change my mindset about that. And I think for some people, it takes a triggering event, like, you know, a major disease or maybe a, a death that's close in the Heart family that is too soon, right? Heart attack, right. exactly. That kind of stuff that triggers those things. And what I try to get a point across to people is that, you know, life is short, life is beautiful, take advantage of it while you can and, you know, fuel your body properly, right? Like that Lamborghini, take care of it. It's your one place that you have to live, right? So you got to take care of it. It's your responsibility. It's nobody else's responsibility. And Correct. it's got to be your choice, right? You can't be you can't be forced into it by a significant other, a friend, you know, family members, whatever it might be. It's got to be your choice. And if it's not, then you're never going to follow through, and you're never going to make those changes. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, whew, time flies when you're having fun. I don't know how else to exactly. say. It. Goodness gracious! Wow, so much information. I have my pen in hand. I took down some stuff that sparked me. I appreciate that. But right. we'll definitely have you back again. It's been a pleasure having you here. Um, we're going to uh, wrap up right now with our tenants that we love to just kind of bookmark the whole uh, experience with at the end of the, of the call. Um, first and foremost, just live, live out loud, people, a little bit louder than you've been, you know, <laughs> take something to the next level. Love, love bigger than you have before. If, if there's anything we need more right now in life is love. Oh, my goodness. So tired of the hate. I got to get it out, out of the way, right? Of course eat mostly plant-based for obvious reasons. We don't even have to explain that. Just eat mostly plant-based. If you need some meat, okay. Plant-based mostly would be great. Of course, the sleep, five to seven hours, eight if you're a real rock star. I know somebody who sleeps 10 hours a night. I can't even figure out how they do that, but they are different as a person. I can tell you that. I can tell you 100%. Also, just move your body. I go out into nature every day, every day. I love being around the trees and the water and the feeling that the New York City air, it is definitely integral for you to move your body each and every day. Also, just stress less. Dan talked about that. The stress level of our country is bonkers on so many levels. And at the same time, umpteen places to relax and have yoga more than has ever been in the history of time. So that mindset is also very important. And of course, you know where I'm going to go. Please check yourself before you wreck yourself. And if you need someone to check you, you better call one of your good friends and have them check you because it's so necessary. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Dan. It's a pleasure. I look forward to speaking to you again. This is Chase Steel Gray. Have a spectacular day. Be the best you you can be. Thank you so much. Peace. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good job. One love, guys. One love. Yes, yes.